Are you living the divine life? Many of us are not, and there just might be a few things keeping us from this. Welcome to Living a Sacred Life with Dr. Raymond Anderson. In our program, you'll learn to use the tools that have been given to you to make changes that you need, and by doing so, come one step closer to living that divine life. Now, here is your host, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. Namaste, my divine and beloved Seventh Way family. I greet you with blessings of joy, peace, and abundance. Okay, so let's now begin to go ahead and center ourselves, quieting the mental chatter of the ego mind and connecting to our higher self, surrounded by light and love as we take a breath. Today I will be reading our affirmation or our prayer from the Daily Word, October 24th, Monday, entitled Action. I am divinely inspired to take positive action. Whenever I am moved by a crisis, a problem facing my community, my country, or the world, I can take action and be part of the solution. My first step is to get prayed up, remembering that the presence and power of God is in the midst of every situation. When I am loving and centered in God, I experience greater insight and creativity. As I lift my eyes above the appearance of trouble, I set my sights on divine outcomes. I am excited as innovative ideas spring into my consciousness. With divine assurance, I take inspired action. I am wise and strong as God works in, through, and as me. Through my example, I encourage others to take action. And together, we make a positive difference. Ezra 10.4, take action, for it is your duty, and we are with you. Be strong and do it. So, many teachers, mystics, psychics, sages, shamans, all of them, are pretty much right about now sharing with the masses a great deal of information about the shift that is to occur in 2012. A shift that actually is already in process. It's happening right now. And I mention this shift mainly because it's while it's going to affect all of us, some are being affected slightly differently. Some are even now feeling the urgings of discontent, a divine discontent that challenges them to leave the comforts of complacency, to leave the comforts of the status quo. Some people are feeling the call of that still small voice as it encourages them to trust, to take that first step in faith, to believe that God has a bigger dream for them than the one they've been living. However, many people, due to fear, they remain in their comfort zone. They continue to trust the voice of the ego, which screams, drowning out the quiet, calm voice of spirit. And yet if they continue on this path, They will die with their songs still within them. As Oliver Wendell Holmes said, many people die with their music still in them. Why is this so? Too often it is because they are always getting ready to live. Before they know it, time runs out. And this is echoed in the words of Henry David Thoreau who said, Most men live lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with their songs still in them. This is why this is a sort of wake-up call where I encourage you to live the life you're meant to live. To live a life of power. A life where you are aligned with spirit and filled with joy and passion as you live based on that purpose and passion. Living in this manner, you're, you're free from regret. And you live your life not as a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather you skid in sideways where you're thoroughly used up, totally worn out and loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. So how do you do this? How do you live this life? Actually, I'm glad you asked. You begin now to be the spiritual warrior that you are meant to be rather than the warmonger that we are trained and taught to be by our culture. Before I explain more about the how and why of being a spiritual warrior, I'd like to take some time to clarify what I mean by spiritual warrior. And in listening to what I mean by spiritual warrior, by default, you will understand what I mean by a warmonger. So one of the easiest ways for us to envision a spiritual warrior, 
would be to look at the various archetypes that we use in the stories that we tell, the motion pictures, the books, etc., poetry, etc. For example, Star Wars. In the Star Wars saga, the spiritual warriors clearly are the Jedi Knights, while the warmongers are the Sith. In the Matrix, Neo is a spiritual warrior, while Agent Smith is the warmonger. Harry Potter, spiritual warrior. Vold, uh, he who shall not be named. Well, I said it anyway. Voldemort, warmonger. And I can go on listing more, like the X-Men, Green Lantern, Spider-Man. However, there are those you might not as easily spot as spiritual warriors. For example, Tom Hanks in the film Forrest Gump. Or another Tom Hanks character in the movie, Castaway. Or what about Seely in The Color Purple? All of them are spiritual warriors. What all of these archetypal characters share in common is what makes them spiritual warriors. And it will be those characteristics that we are charged with embodying as we step forward, putting on the full armor of God as spoken of in the Bible, which I'm going to outline a little bit later in a more metaphysical manner and how that applies to us today as spiritual warriors. So let's talk about Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 17, where we are told, Therefore, my brethren, be strengthened in our Lord and in the force of his power, and put on the armor of God so that you can stand against the strategies of the devil, because your fight has not been with flesh and blood, but with principalities and the rulers and the powers of this dark world, and with the wicked spirits which are under heaven. Because of this, put on the armor of God, that you should be able to confront the evil one. And when you are ready, in all things you shall stand. Stand therefore and gird your waist with truth, and put on the breastplate of righteousness, and shoe your feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace. And with these, excuse me, and with these, take to you the shield of faith that with it you may have the power to quench all the blazing bolts of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation and grasp the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That translation that I used is from the Aramaic in plain English. Now, metaphysically, I personally read the Bible or any other sacred text, such as the Tao Te Ching or the Bhagavad Gita, and I read it in a manner similar to how I personally how I watch a movie. I look structurally and symbolically at how each piece is put together. In the passage that I just read from Ephesians, there is a clear symbolic representation, meaning we know that there are no literal shoes for us to wear. There are no there is no literal helmet, etc. It's symbolic. These can also be seen in a, another passage in Romans. Romans 13, 11 through 14, which states, I know this. Now is the time and the hour to awake from our sleep. For now, lost my place, sorry. For now, our life has drawn closer to us than when we believed. The night has passed and the day has arrived. Therefore, let us strip off the works of of darkness from us, and let us put on the armor of light, and let us walk in a right manner as those in the daytime, not in partying, not in drunkenness, not in orgies, not in envy, not in fighting, but put on our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, and do not be concerned for the desires of your flesh. Again, it is not telling us to literally put on Yeshua or Yeshua, the Messiah or Jesus Christ as the Greek translates the original Aramaic. So we are going to look at or go step by step and identify exactly what it means for us to be spiritual warriors. And I'd like to start by revisiting the Romans passage that I just mentioned. Let us strip off the works of darkness. Actually, let's go to the beginning where we're told that it's time to awaken from our sleep. Our sleep being our living in a state of unconscious 
action, a place where we live almost in a default setting rather than consciously utilizing our divine power. Night has passed and day has arrived. Yet another symbolic or poetic way to say the the time to awaken has actually arrived. That period of sleep has ended. With daylight comes clarity and a sense of purpose as we wake from our slumber, from that state of consciousness where we are not truly alive, but where we're more like zombies, simply seeking to satisfy some kind of hunger that actually never is satisfied. When we're in that state, we're more like the walking dead. It's really important that we... How do I want to say? It's really important that we take the time to see the difference between those who are walking according to purpose, according to power, according to their divinity, versus those who are walking according to the state of the warmonger who is set in ego, who competes and must defeat and cannot live in peace, who is always hungry yet never satisfied. There's a difference between those who walk and are alive and those who are walking dead. It's time for our first break. So you are listening to Living a Sacred Life on Voice America, the Seventh Wave Network. Stay tuned. online community for positive change. Seventh Wave Network. Are you seeking spiritual guidance or spiritual instruction and insight? Do you want Reiki or a holistic life coach to assist you in manifesting the life you are meant to live? If the answer to either of those questions is yes, then take this as opportunity knocking at your door. Pick up the phone or email Reverend Dr. Ray Anderson today and make those necessary changes in your life. Say goodbye to the mediocre and hello to the extraordinary life. What are you waiting for? Chat with Reverend Dr. Ray today. Call 202-607-1573 or visit www.clspfi.org on the web. Our society is spiraling out of control. Are you stressed out and concerned about the events occurring around you? Is there hope? Yes, there is. Tune in to Living in the End Times, featuring your host, Monita Dukia, who will help you understand and navigate these perilous times. Living in the End Times airs live Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern Time, on 7th Wave. There's a course offered on 7th Wave Network that you never saw offered in college. One that provides information on how to transform ancient wisdom teachings into everyday life. You'll learn how to create from your spirit and explore the world with all of your senses. Participation is encouraged. Enroll in Spirituality 101, the course you can't afford to miss with your host, Reverend Norma. Class is in session every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 noon Pacific Time in your favorite classroom, 7th Wave Network. Awakened Media for a Transforming World. Seventh Wave Network. You are listening to Living a Sacred Life with Dr. Raymond Anderson. If you have a question or comment about today's program, please call 1-866-472-5795. Again, that's 1-866-472-5795. Or you can send an email to 7th Wave at pfcls.org. Now, let's return to Living a Sacred Life. Welcome back. So, where we left off, Romans says to strip off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Darkness being, once again, that state of unconsciousness, a mental state where where you live blind, you live unaware. You're in the dark, stumbling through life rather than in the light, illumined and aware, where you're able to see and walk through life consciously. Those who remain unaware and asleep are those who party. And and, and before you get, get all upset... Party meaning to party in excess or in a manner in which you're not living in alignment with your purpose, your passion or spiritual principles. I am not saying 
And scripture is not saying that you should not throw a birthday party for your kid, grandchild, that you should not go to a graduation party. It's clearly not the type of partying that's referred to. It's partying to the degree that you are engaging in drunkenness, orgies, fighting. It's, it's where the partying is not about joy. It's not about peace. It's not about love. It's simply about gratifying some ego-based need that you have. That's the type of partying that it's referring to. Living and acting from that state, that partying, walking dead zombie state, is about suffering. You're using alcohol, sex, drugs, competition, desire, and, and the need for confrontation to somehow appease the ego, to keep you in a place where you can validate your sense of unworthiness, where guilt and shame and regret are given platform. We're able to release the concerns or the desires of the flesh, meaning those baser ego states that drive our impulses to do as the zombies do, which is to eat and eat and eat, never satisfied and never nourished because we're, in essence, dead inside. But by living according to spiritual principles and living like Jesus, meaning living to living in alignment with our Christ consciousness or our Buddha nature, we rise from the dead. We're resurrected from sleep to waking state of awareness, and in that state... We now live consciously. It is now that the full armor can be worn or utilized. Looking back at Ephesians, we are told to be strong in the Lord's might. In other words, our power does not come from our physical selves, nor does it come from our ego, nor our willpower when our will is aligned with the ego. Our power, true power, is when we're in a vibrational match with spirit, vibrationally aligned with joy, aligned with grace. Peace, and most of all, love. When we're living in alignment with spirit, we embody the armor, so to speak, and we're able to stand against the strategies of the devil, to stand against the strategies of the ego, the deceiver, the adversary, the darkness, the state of fear. The passage goes on to remind us that we're not in a fight with flesh and blood. We're not battling men and women. We're not in that kind of fight, that kind of battle. We're battling against principalities or ruling principles that govern our consciousness by keeping us in a state of fear, in a state of victim consciousness, scarcity, competition, depression, anger, and denial. Spiritual warriors stand up against those thoughts and principles that the lower or that would lower their vibration, that take them out of alignment with source. There is no evil force outside of us except that which we might give power to. According to your thoughts, it is so. The first piece of armor is truth. It's in the, it's our first line of defense, so to speak, against the devil or the deceiver, the accuser, the enemy, the father of lies. Get my point? The devil, the deceiver, the accuser, the enemy, the father of lies. Truth blocks that. Truth counters the lie. Truth counters the deceit, the accusations. Truth is the belt around the waist because both the root and sacral or spleen chakra deal with your your needs, your feeling of safety, your feelings, your emotional needs, uh, having a sense of boundaries, trust, addiction, and joy. This is where the, the accusations and lies tend to hit you. So you have truth as your first line of defense. The thoughts which convince you that you are not worthy. You don't deserve to be happy. You don't deserve peace. You'll never amount to anything. You're bad. You're just evil. Everything you do is wrong. You're just like your mother or you're just like your father. You deserve to suffer. All of these lies, all of these accusations, accusations, truth blocks them and dissolves them. The truth is you are worthy. You are good enough. You are one with God, plain and simple. Mistakes do not make you unworthy. It's only your belief in your unworthiness that can do damage to you. 
You have the power to change that. You can never not be worthy. No matter what you do, no matter who you are, you're already worthy. You're already good enough. Whether you're awake and aware or unaware and asleep, two different matters, but you are worthy. The second piece of armor is the breastplate of righteousness. It covers the torso, which shields both the solar plexus and heart chakras. Righteousness, or living in accord to spiritual law, living in accord to spiritual principles, living free of guilt, is your natural state. The chakras are then vibrating in balance when grounded and guarded by righteousness. The third piece of armor, the readiness of the gospel of peace. In peace, or when at peace, you're, you're ready to walk the walk. You're ready to take the, the steps needed to take to proceed in life. In peace, you're able to live a life of joy, to live a life of compassion, and to live a life of service. You go through the day moving forward in peace. The fourth piece of armor is the shield of faith, which extinguishes or quelches the fiery arrows of lies, the arrows of accusations and deceit, scarcity, the victim consciousness, and the belief in a separation from God. The arrows cannot pierce your spirit because faith, your belief in truth, your belief in love, blocks all of that, blocks everything that is not in alignment with God when you have that kind of faith. Your The fifth piece of armor that's mentioned is the helmet of salvation, which covers the third eye and the crown chakra. Salvation is your awareness of your at-oneness with source. It's your ability to see God in every man, in every woman, every child, including yourself, and in all of nature. This is when you're saved. You're saved from the belief in separation. You're saved from the belief in lack and limitation. You're saved from living in a consciousness that's built on the foundation of fear. You're saved from walking in your own self-created and self-inflicted hell. The sixth piece of armor, even though it's not armor, but the sixth piece that the sixth piece that's mentioned as armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the divine logos, the power of creation, the power of creation, the throat chakra, which balances or deals with communication, creativity, breathing, and the very life force. The sword has the ability to cut through the illusion, the the lies. It's very much like the Tibetan Vajra or Dorje, which represents the symbolic nature of a diamond, which can cut through any substance except itself, and that of the thunderbolt and its irresistible force. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's that power that we wield last. Conscious co-creators who have the power of life and death in our tongue. That's why several weeks ago when we began the show, I talked to you about the power of and the importance of being aware and mindful of the words you speak. Every thought you have, every word you speak, in essence, is a prayer. Are you, are you praying a right or are you praying a miss? Did what you said to the person on the bus today, is that something that you want to have happen in your life? Or are you speaking only things that you want to see manifest? That's why this, the sword, the word of God, is the last thing we pick up. Because 
if we go through our life without the faith, without righteousness, without truth, without peace, then we're, we're, we're like a little child who picks up a gun having no idea of the dangers, having no idea of the power of this tool. However, when we go step by step, living in accord with what I just mentioned, then you're a conscious co-creator or conscious creator able to manifest and demonstrate in your life willingly, willfully, knowingly, and in alignment with God, in alignment with source, in alignment with your highest self, your purpose, and your passion. So now, fully armed and fully armored, the spiritual warrior stands. And it is from this place that Marianne Williamson was referring to in the closing passage, which I spoke about previously in the episode, Our Deepest Fear. If you recall, it said, And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. This is the meaning of being a light unto the world. Your light enlightens others. I'm Reverend Dr. Ray. You are listening to Living a Sacred Life on the Seventh Wave Network. We'll be right back after these messages. Listening on a higher dimension. Seventh Wave Network. Goodbye, self-critical. Hello, self-thrilled. Can you define your talent in six words or less? Are you using your inner resource, intuition, to teach you how? Listening to Joyce Anderson of Conversations with Yourself will work your intuitive muscle to discover your divine talent. Each week, your host, Joyce Anderson, teaches practices to jumpstart your intuition as your GPS to becoming self-thrilled. From sports to business to music and food, talent is everywhere. Find yours. Joyce and her guests will share their how-to stories on being self-thrilled. Tune in to Conversations with Yourself Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the 7th Wave Channel and ignite your talent. Are you seeking spiritual guidance or spiritual instruction and insight? Do you want Reiki or a holistic life coach to assist you in manifesting the life you are meant to live? If the answer to either of those questions is yes, then take this as opportunity knocking at your door. Pick up the phone or email Reverend Dr. Ray Anderson today and make those necessary changes in your life. Say goodbye to the mediocre and hello to the extraordinary life. What are you waiting for? Chat with Reverend Dr. Ray today. Call 202-607-1573 or visit www.clspfi.org on the web. Being here with Ariel and Shia Kane is an ordinary person's guide to modern day enlightenment. This show is an exciting exploration which opens the door to living in the moment. Don't miss being here. Tune in every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern with Ariel and Shia Kane right here on the Seventh Wave Network. Be extraordinary. Seventh Wave Network. are listening to Living a Sacred Life with Dr. Raymond Anderson. If you have a question or comment about today's program, please call 1-866-472-5795. Again, that's 1-866-472-5795. Or you can send an email to 7thWave at pfcls.org. Now, let's return to Living a Sacred Life. So, before the break, the last thing that I had said was what it meant to be a light unto the world, and that the light you have when you live as the light is the light that helps to enlighten others. Confucius said something that, and I'm going to paraphrase, when you have knowledge, let others light their candle at it. Meaning, when you have the light, then others are able to come to you And by your example, by your just being 
present, being awake, being aware, they are then able to do the same. They gain enlightenment, they gain illumination, they gain peace and purpose and passion. It's not up to us as spiritual warriors to try to change anyone or anything. That's not our job. Because to do that, we have to step into the warmonger state of mind. The warmonger tries to force people to do what he or she wants. The dictator, the government official who demands, the CEO who it has to be his way or the highway. Those are warmongers. They demand and they take advantage because in their mind, it's, it's either them or you. There's no room at the top for more than one person. So as spiritual warriors, it's our job to do as Gandhi said and be the change. Not to make someone else change, but to become it. Because in that, you change the vibrational tone that goes out. The ripples go out. It touches others and inspires change in them as well. It's important to know that where the spiritual warrior is surrounded by light... The warmonger is surrounded by darkness. The spiritual warrior supports life, while the warmonger supports death. The spiritual warrior brings love to every situation. The warmonger brings fear. The spiritual warrior gives and saves and is centered. The warmonger takes, rapes, and is scattered. You know... I remember in, and I don't remember the exact year, I want to say maybe 1985, 1986, there was a film called The Last Dragon, which starred actor, martial artist, Ty Mock. And his character in the film, Leroy Green, also known as Bruce Leroy, is in the process of learning what it means to be, in the film, a warrior. He's learning what it means to be a master. Martial arts master, what that means. But in terms of our, what we're talking about and in terms of the archetype, he's learning what it means to be a spiritual warrior. And there's one point in the film where he says to a young man, one of his students and friends, Johnny, he says, sometimes it is hard to live the way of the wise. And at the time when I was watching the film, I mean, I, I, I understood what he meant. And as a martial artist, I got the gist of it, and I had already been on the spiritual path, per se, for a little bit of time, although I was still living um, maybe 75% sleep most of the time. But living according to your higher self actually does take practice. There are those who simply awaken and are masters, plain and simple. But for most of us, it takes practice, and it can be challenging. However, it's your birthright. It's what you're here to do. And when you think about the other option, alive and awake, or zombie and dead, hmm, I'm thinking that who wants to be a warmonger? Who wants to be the walking dead? Who wants to be a vampire sucking the life and energy off of other people? depleting the world of its life and resources rather than giving life, rather than giving love, bringing peace, entering a room and having people love the fact that you're there instead of trying to sneak out. It's your birthright. And when you're living from that state, that place of consciousness, then you're able to manifest miracles on a daily basis. You have... Uh, another one of my favorite films or series of films, there's uh, The Empire Strikes Back, where Yoda tells Luke, do or do not, there is no try. And I'm not doing my Yoda impersonation because some of y'all laughed at me the last time I did it, so I'm not doing it again. But uh, if you give me a call, then I'm, I'll, I'll do it for you. But while I'm on the air, I am not doing the Yoda impersonation. So anyhow, do or do not, there is no try. I actually selected that as the title for next week's show, which is part two of this, where we're going to talk about how to live the day-by-day, -day, the step-by-step -step living a sacred warrior life, how to walk the walk and talk the talk. But my grandmother and then my mother and I know other 
older generational people will say things like, pee or get off the pot, meaning do something. Yoda said, do or do not. There is no try. You're either hot or you're cold. There is no lukewarm for you to be. Do something. Stop fiddling and fidgeting and and waiting for some magic miracle unicorn something or other to come prancing down your driveway with a leprechaun on its back and a pot of gold hanging around its neck as your sign and symbol that it's time to wake up and that it's time to live the life that you're supposed to live. Today is the day. Now is the time to release the excuses, to stop swimming in denial, to stop walking around in the dark, bumping into the furniture because you would rather curse the darkness than to turn on the light. I mean, if not now, when? When are you going to live the life that you're meant to live? Now is the only time that you have. Now is the only moment or the time that you can actually make an effect on. You can't do anything. You can plan and whatnot for tomorrow. But you're planning now. You're affecting change now. You can say, I'm going to put this $10 away so I can use it tomorrow. Tomorrow may never get here. And in honesty, there is no tomorrow. Because when that time gets here, it is another now moment. So now is the moment to affect change. Now is the moment to live. I mean, aren't you tired of living a life of quiet desperation? Tired of, instead of in the morning saying, God, good morning. You're saying, good morning. No, I said that wrong. <laughs> That's hilarious. Instead of saying, Ooh, hold on a second, it got awfully warm down here. Instead of saying, good morning, God, and it's a good thing, you're saying, ah, God. Okay, you get the point. <laughs> Ooh. The point is... Do you wake up and curse the morning or do you wake up feeling blessed? Do you wake up ready to live the life that you feel you're called to live? Or do you wake up dreading another day of work, dreading another day that you have to look at your husband or wife or partner? Another day that, oh, I have to get on the bus again. I have to do this again. I have to do that again. Aren't you aren't you just dragging yourself through life? If you look at, uh, what is that TV show, The Walking Dead, look at the zombies. Look at how they just drag themselves down the street looking for something to eat. They're just, ugh, it's just blah. They all look gray. There's, there's no life. There's no excitement. There's no passion. They're dead. Don't you want to now make up your mind to say, whatever is holding me back, it's done. I have the armor to protect me and I'm moving forward. I'm going to do it in spite of my fear. I'm going to feel the fear. If I must feel it, I'm going to feel it and do what I must do anyway. The, the excuses, they're done. I'm not going to be like Jacob Marley in the story, A Christmas Carol, where by the story, all of the evil that he did, the, the, the pain and the regrets, etc. He built a chain yard by yard, mile by mile, acre by acre. Do you want to sever those chains now and say, I'm not carrying that around anymore? I've carried it before. I've carried the guilt and the guilt got me here. I carried the regret. The regret got me here. I carried the anger and that this is where it's got me. If I continue to carry this, I'm never going to be able to take flight. I'm never going to be able to defy gravity because I'm allowing it to hold me down. Now is the time to say enough is enough. I know that I'm meant for things greater than what I may have been doing or how I've been living. Other people have jobs and love their jobs and feel passionate about what they do. So can I. Other people have dreams that many people poo-pooed on and said, that's impossible. But they did it anyway. So can I. Why can't I do what others have done? You can. 
but you have to get out of your own way. You have to believe in the miracles. You have to put on the full armor of God so that the accusations of others don't hold you down. So the lies that come at you don't hold you back. So that all of the things that anchor you and hold you down and keep you prisoner are released. Now is the time. Now is the time to let the song that's inside of you out. And I mean sing like no one can hear you and dance like there's no one watching. Take a breath and feel the joy in that. And de- and decide now to take a stand. Fully armored, protected, being the best Christ that you can be. In alignment with your higher self. In a vibrational match to all the things and all the people and all the places and all the situations that you want to have in your life. They're already here. Believe that, live according to that, and you'll see it according to your belief. It's possible, but you have to believe and know that it's possible. So, as I said before, next week we're going to talk about more of being a spiritual warrior. Today I outlined for you the how, how you are a spiritual warrior, how you become one, and what that exactly means. Next week, we're going to talk more about the, but how do you do it? The actual putting principle into practice, the actual walking the walk and talking the talk, because that's where a lot of us, well, let me speak for me personally. That's where I, over the years, found a great deal of the challenge conceptualizing the what it is and the the why it is that was easy putting it into practice that was the challenging part so it's time for our next break we'll be right back with more living a sacred life stay tuned Network. There is a lot more going on in religion and government than what high-ranking officials are telling you. The Bible uncovers the truth, prophecies, and a world of opportunities. Get the answers you need when you tune into the program To the Stars and Beyond with your hosts Michael List and Adam Hong. We'll explore the religious and spiritual beliefs from ancient history to the prophecies that are shaping the world and current events of today. To the Stars and Beyond airs live every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern on 7th Wave Network. Yes, you can live a more positive and spiritual life. One step you can take each week is to tune in to What We're Thinking About with host Ken Ludwig. This program is designed to provide thought-provoking discussion after each week's show. Ken and his guests will challenge you to look at things in an entirely different way, to step outside the comfort zone and see the universe as it truly is. What We're Thinking About can be heard live every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Are you seeking spiritual guidance or spiritual instruction and insight? Do you want Reiki or a holistic life coach to assist you in manifesting the life you are meant to live? If the answer to either of those questions is yes, then take this as opportunity knocking at your door. Pick up the phone or email Reverend Dr. Ray Anderson today and make those necessary changes in your life. Say goodbye to the mediocre and hello to the extraordinary life. What are you waiting for? Chat with Reverend Dr. Ray today. Call 202-607-1573 or visit www.clspfi.org on the web. The new home for visionary positive change. 
Seventh Wave Network. You are listening to Living a Sacred Life with Dr. Raymond Anderson. If you have a question or comment about today's program, please call 1-866-472-5795. Again, that's 1-866-472-5795. Or you can send an email to seventhwave at pfcls.org. Now, let's return to Living a Sacred Life. Welcome back. Welcome back. Before I forget, I want to also mention, as I said, next week we're doing part two of this Spiritual Warrior series. The week after that, we have guest Howard Falco. Howard Falco is the author of an amazing book entitled, I Am. The Power of Discovering Who You Really Are. And author, New York Times bestselling author, Marcy Shimoff, who wrote the book Happy for No Reason, is credited with giving praise to Howard's book by saying, I Am is a powerful book about self-realization. Howard Falco offers a profound explanation of the nature of your own existence and an understanding of the life you are capable of creating. I wanted to mention this now because someone emailed me, if I'm not mistaken, last week after we had uh, Dr. Sherry Rosenthal and we were talking about her book and someone wrote to ask for the title of the book and the ISBN number, etc. And she asked if I could, if I would remember, to mention, if we're going to have other authors on, to mention their book so people might be able to get the book before the author, teacher, guest comes on the show. So I'm mentioning it to you now. I Am by Howard Falco. Excellent book. And he's going to be on the show talking about the power of those two words, I Am, and that the power that they have in discovering who you really are. And biblically speaking, if we remember, that is the name, per se, that is the name, symbolically, archetypally, the name that Moses was given when he asked, well, who do I go back and tell them sent me when he was on the mountain? And the response was, I am that I am. Tell them I am sent you. And in that we have great power because anything that we put I am with, we are in, we are in essence aligning the very name of God with this whatever. I am so sick and tired of my boss. You're giving power to that being sick and tired because you're taking the very name of God, the power of the word, which we just spoke of in terms of spiritual warriors, and you're giving it power. So I'm sure Howard's going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff, but I wanted to mention that now so that you would be aware. So as we prep for the close of the show, I would like to just encourage you to go back and listen again once the show is available in the archives and once it's available on iTunes and go back and listen. If you have a Bible, you don't have to have one. You know, uh, I have a lot of Buddhist friends and as an interspiritual warrior, interspiritual warrior, interspiritual minister, I have spiritual texts from a variety of cultures, heritages, uh, religions, backgrounds, etc. And you may not. So that's fine. I mean, you can Google the passage that I mentioned in Ephesians and Romans, etc. But go go read them and listen to the broadcast again and take the time to really be mindful, to take the time to awaken, to take the time to be more aware, because it's going to it's going to it's going to be rather important per se. It's going to be important that you have at least a clear understanding of what we talked about today as we go into what we're going to talk about next week. Because as I said, it's going to be the nuts and bolts of it's Monday morning. I have to get ready to go to work. I don't want to get out of bed. It's cold. My bed is warm. I already know I'm going to have to walk down the street and catch the bus and I have to ride the bus or the train for two hours to get to the next transfer point, etc. And I really don't like my job and my boss 
sorry, pardon my, pardon my French, but my boss is an ass, and I really can't stand it there, etc., etc., etc. How do I live, move, and have my being as a spiritual warrior when that's the condition of my life? When the condition of my life is, it's Monday morning, my son is ill, or my grandmother just passed away, or my car broke down, or my best friend in college has cancer, etc. How do I live in joy when shitty things happen? How do I live in joy when I hate my job? How do I live in joy when I have to care for a, a sick child or aging parent or whatever? How do I do that? That's what we're going to be addressing next week. So I would really like for everyone to have a nice, clear understanding of what we talked about today so that we can move forward. And speaking of clear understandings, another something that was asked um, email last week referencing last week's show. I'm going to throw this out there now in case this young lady is listening. Last week, Dr. Rosenthal and I were talking about weight. And I don't have the book in front of me right now, but it was basically the question was what, how, let's see how how to phrase her question. We made a comment about people losing weight and that even if you lose the weight, it really doesn't matter. And I'm, and I'm really stretching a paraphrase here. And once again, if if the young lady or anyone else has any questions, please feel free to give me a call or email me and we can discuss it more in depth. Um, What we were talking about is here's a person who will just say me, say I'm someone and I weigh 220 pounds, which I do. And I say I want to lose the weight because once I lose the weight, I'll feel good about myself. That's a lie. If you don't feel good about yourself now, then no matter how much weight you lose, you're still not going to feel good about yourself. You're still not going to feel worthy. In essence, you're using the weight as an excuse. Most people who say, if I lose this weight, then X, Y, and Z, I'll feel better, I'll be better. It's one of those, well, when I get a million dollars, I can be happy then. However, you get the million dollars and you're still not happy. You lose the 20 pounds and you're still not feeling worthy because the weight isn't the issue. There's some other domestication related lessons learned from the media and parents and teachers and ministers, etc., that you are holding within that is blocking your sense of worth. So you have to let that go in order to truly be happy To truly be worthy, you have to feel that despite weighing 400 pounds. Feel worthy, then you can lose the weight. The weight will stay off and you'll still be happy. You're not, your happiness, your joy, your peace, your love, your sense of worth is not dependent upon how much you weigh, how much you earn, how tall, how short, whatever. It's not dependent, the car you drive, it's not dependent on any of that. So as we prep for the close of the show, I would like to thank you for tuning in today. I pray that today's lessons have assisted you in taking one step closer to being aware and living a sacred life. I look forward to our discussion next week. Once again, please go back and listen and read and whatnot so we can have a nice in-depth conversation next week. Feel free to contact me during the week, as I said before. And I guess until next time, live the life you are meant to live. In blessings and in love. Talk to you soon.